If you didn't know Mark Robinson, Lieutenant Governor of North Carolina before, oh, you gonna learn today. Uh, they told me I had 12 minutes. I don't see anything on the screen, so I guess I'm with y'all for the rest of the evening. <laughs> Not gonna use that podium. I can't stand still. I got vertigo. I might fall off this stage. <laughs> Very first thing I'm gonna do is always, I'm gonna give thanks to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the very first thing I'm going to do. Amen. I sat on the 27th floor of this hotel last night and looked out over the skyline of Dallas, Texas. I am a poor kid from Greensboro, North Carolina, an alcoholic father uh, my, who died when I was 12 years old. My mother made me the man that I am. Every strike that the left says I have, I had against me. Poor, black, uh, a widowed mom living on the wrong side of the tracks. But that poor black kid from the wrong side of the tracks was sitting on the 27th floor of this hotel overlooking the Dallas skyline as the first black lieutenant governor of North Carolina. America is still the greatest nation on earth. And I don't care what these communists say. I don't care what these socialists say. I don't care what these blue haired freaks say with a tackle box in their face at the college campus. This is the greatest nation on earth and it's all because of God. He's the one that made it possible. So we give him thanks first and foremost. Oh my Lord. Oh, land sakes. This is what I'm talking about. Not a victim. He's a victor. God put him exactly where he is exactly when he's supposed to be there for a reason. No matter what cards you've been dealt, no matter what past you got, no matter what trials and tribulations and roadblocks that you've had to burst through, ceilings that you've had to skyrocket up and through into the next level. Talk that talk, Lieutenant Governor. This is refreshing to hear and to just listen to a man with integrity. If this guy ever runs for president, I promise you, he has my vote. Go Mark Robinson. This isn't my first time seeing him, but this is my first time seeing him like this. I've Seen him talk about gun rights and things of that nature. He's a very strong pro Second Amendment advocate. But this, oh, this is on a whole nother level. He's dishing out that talk right here. This is what people need to hear. They might not like it. They might feel some type of way about it. But usually if you get offended by something, when it's based in truth, based in moral principles, based in a godly foundation, you need to hear it. You need to pay close attention and let that register in the, in the, in the brain. This, ooh, yes, sir. So now let me get into what I got to tell you. July 2nd, 1863, a town called Gettysburg, a place called Little Round Top. It was undefended, and the Union Army realized that if the Confederates took that high ground, they could win that battle. They sent troops to defend that, uh, that place, and among those troops was a man named Joshua Chamberlain from Maine. Joshua Chamberlain was with the 20th Maine, and the 20th Maine became the far left flank of the Union position and was told, hold this position at all costs because as you go, so goes the battle. Chamberlain's unit, the 20th, was attacked, attacked by the Confederates several times and they repulsed every attack. But they found themselves without ammunition. They found themselves in desperate straits. And Chamberlain knew that if he did not win that battle on that hill, that, the possibly, that possibly the entire battle would be lost. So he talked to his men and he implored his men and he steeled their spines and he told them to attach their metal bayonets to their wooden rifles. And they lined up and they swung down that hill in the fashion of a picket fence and they swept those Confederates off of that hill, came back up on the hill, reform, reformed and won the day. Chamberlain went on to become known as the Lion of Little Round Top and received the Medal of Honor for his actions on that day. Why do I bring that up? I bring that up because the world now is Gettysburg and America is Little Round Top. And you, you are the soldiers that stand on that hill in this defense. I want you to notice what I said. I did not say Congress was the soldier standing on the hill. The Senate is not the, the, the soldier standing on the hill. The city council is not the soldiers standing on the hill. You are the soldiers standing on the hill in defense of this nation. You are. It is up to you to hold this line. 
because we're standing on this hill now and what do we see? We look down that hill and who do we see charging up? We saw, we see a whole horde being led by Jim Crow Joe, Nasty Nancy, and Chump, Sh Chump Schumer. Mm. They're coming up the hill followed by a whole raft of socialist nitwits who believe that a baby in the womb is a clump of cells and do not honor life in the womb. No, it is not. They believe that it's you should blessing. not have a firearm to protect yourself but that you should pay for them to have firearms to protect them. They don't believe that your children should be educated. They believe that they should be indoctrinated. They're dragging up that hill all types of things. CRT, transgenderism, this idea of birthing people. Who in the world came up with that garbage? Satan, yes, the evil one. Kill, steal, destroy. They're That's what he's doing. They're dragging up this socialist idea that criminals should not be punished, that they should be allowed to run rampant, that our borders should be wide open, that our police should be demonized, that our veterans should be dishonored. And they're also pushing this agenda to tell you that unless you go get a shot, you cannot keep your job or open your business, or go to church. You see those folks that are coming up that hill. There's a word for them. They're called socialists. They're called communists. I just prefer to call them idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked, deceit-filled sinners. So now what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Why do I talk about Joshua Chamberlain in the 20th Maine? We're going to fight. I talk about Joshua <laughs> Chamberlain in the 20th Maine because that is who we come from. We do not come from a weak, ineffective, jellyback people that when trouble happens, we find a safe space and try to find a counselor to talk about it. Americans uh -uh. stand up and fight for what they believe in and will put their lives on the line for what they believe in. They will put their money where their mouth is. And when the times get tough, you had best believe that Americans get going just like they did on Little Round Top. They don't lay down. They don't back up. They don't quit. They stand up with everything in them and they push forward. You see, we got a lot of things we got to fix in this nation. We got a president right now that could barely string together two sentences. Let alone one. <laughs> Somebody told me uh, too much the other day I saw Joe Biden on TV and I don't think he was blinking. I told him I think his servos were probably broken on the remote control. <laughs> that prompter. Mm -mm, you frozen. see what happens when you replace a line. Well, I would say a lamb, but that's an insult to lambs. <laughs> I'm not really He's sure not what our current president is. I'm not really sure if he realizes what he is. But I know this. In November, we have got to stand on that hill and we have got to declare to America that conservative principles win the day and conservative principles work. And so we've got to get out. We've got to fight. We've got to talk to our friends and neighbors. Can't be the silent majority anymore. Silence never did anything in this nation. Imagine if the founders had been silent. Imagine if the abolitionists had been silent. Imagine if all the folks who came before you that made today possible had been silent and refused to stand up and fight. So it's time to talk to our neighbors. It's time to talk to our friends. It's time to tell our families the good story about what conservatism does. It's time to remind them of the good days under President Donald Trump. Big 45. You know, President Donald Trump, the one that CNN and ABC and the rest of all these lying news agencies, don't get me started. I ain't got but three minutes. I can go three days talking about how pitiful the news media is. <laughs> this man is Let the me truth. say this to the news media. I'm going to tell you this once, and I've already told you before. 
I'm not scared of the news media. And I'm going to tell you why. Uh, last time I shook at my shoes was the last time uh, my mom or daddy took their belt off uh, for me. And that was a long time ago. There's only one that can take their belt off on me, and he sits high and he looks low. And he is the ruler of this world, and it is not ABC, CBS, or NBC. Yahweh. The way. Don't get it Those twisted. Those agencies don't have the answers because they don't even know what the question is. So I don't fear them. If anything, I stand firm. And when they get mad, I know I'm doing it right. So we got to stand up. We got to stand tall. and We got to stand firm. Because now is not the time for what was called long ago cowards and shirkers. See, the cowards and shirkers got no place right now. Unfortunately, uh, in Washington, D.C., we got a lot of cowards and shirkers. But guess who can get rid of those cowards and shirkers? The men on that hill. And who is the men on that hill? It is you. <laughs> Folks, I didn't come here today to encourage my colleagues. They don't need any encouragement. I came here today to encourage you to stand up and be the king and queens that you need to be to study your Bible, read your Constitution, and carry those truths into the political arena so that we can save this nation from the socialist horde that is trying to drag it down into the pit of hell. It is going to be up to you. You must be the leader. You must be the ones to save this nation. You think about it. When this country was in peril during the revolution, who saved it? It was the soldiers on the field, the ordinary men and women. When it was in peril during the Civil War, who saved it? The ordinary men and women. When it was in peril during World War I and World War II and all of our other calamities, who saved it? It was the ordinary American who stood up and did extraordinary things. It is time for you to stand up and do extraordinary things. And so I say to you standing on this stage right now, read your Bible. Believe in God. Read your constitution. Hold them dear to your hearts. Place the sword of truth on top of that bayonet of courage. Or the bayonet of truth, excuse me. On top of that rifle of knowledge. Steal your spines and get ready to charge down that hill. And let's sweep this socialist horde off of this blessed land we call the shining city on the hill, the United States of America. God bless you all. God bless Texas. Ooh. God bless North Carolina. Ooh, I don't know about y'all, but I got goosebumps. I'm ready to hit the front lines right now. Hold strong. Don't tread on me. Don't infringe on my rights. Hold truth to God's word. Put on the full armor of the Lord and let's get to work because we got to rebuke all this sin-filled, wicked nonsense that are flooding our streets. We got to, as 1 Timothy 5 verse 20 says, as for those who persist in sin, rebuke them in the presence of all so that they may the rest may stand in fear. Let them know what what we stand on. We live righteously. We're not taking that wide path that leads to destruction, that leads to hell, eternal damnation and punishment. No, we put our faith, our trust and our hope in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the lamb, the good shepherd, the savior, the life giver, the alpha, the omega. Jeremiah 17 verse seven and eight says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose trust is the Lord, for he will be like a tree planted by the water that extends its roots by a stream and does not fear when the heat comes, but it leads its leaves will be green and it will not be anxious in a year of drought nor cease to yield fruit doesn't matter what these blue haired freaks are saying doesn't matter what Joe Biden is saying doesn't matter what people on the conservative or liberal side are saying what God says is what matters what the king the one true king on the throne look up don't look right don't look left God will work it all together for the greater good for those that look to him and it's our duty as warriors as lions as kings and queens to fight back and God bless this man God bless Mark Robinson, his family. I pray for them. We need a whole lot more people like this in high places. 
pro-God, pro-gun, pro-life, and pro-America. And I love folks that don't hide their faith and they shout it from the rooftops with no fear, with no anxiety, no uh, animosity about, well, there's going to be animosity, but there are no worries about what somebody might say, how they might get canceled, because you can't cancel God. There is no truth without God, and you can't overshadow and cast anything over his word. His light will outshine any dark place. His lamp will guide your feet if you let it. If you want to choose the wide path that leads to destruction, evil, sin, and, and let Satan lure every decision you make, by all means, go ahead. God gave us free will, but I'm going to go where Jesus leads. I'm going to go with the one who sacrificed himself, didn't have to. Jesus Christ was perfection. He is all in all always will be, took on the cross, beat death, was resurrected, and came back down in the form of the Holy Spirit that's in us when we've been saved and born again. We've repented and, and confessed Christ as Lord and Savior and been baptized. That's where I put my hope. That's where I put my trust and faith because he can conquer all of this. It doesn't matter what these people on, on the mainstream news media are saying. You can't cancel God. Never. God is not dead, never will be dead, creator of all things, and will always win the day. We'll always win in everything. It may look dark and gloomy. It may look like a, a very sad and depressing time, but but have hope. Take hope in, in God because when there's darkness, eventually there will be light. In the darkest of times, when the tiniest glimmer of light, when a, a glimmer of hope shines, oh, it's going to be a bright and shiny day. And that's what we got coming. We got people like this. We got people like myself. We got people like you and our brave men and women that lay it all down and fight for our lives and our freedoms and the things that people take for granted every single day. We're going to be just fine. You keep on standing up for truth. You keep on standing firm in the faith. Sell your cloak, buy a sword, get yourself a gun, and hold the line. That's what we got to do. And we got to look to... to point people in the right direction, point to God and enhance God, uplift God in the face of evil where most of these people, they just cowered and, and bowed to the woke mob. No, 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 not us, not Christians. You may want to be a conservative, but you should be a Christian first and foremost. That should be your identity. That should be what you represent and what you put on your name tag and your driver's like everything. That should be what you want to be called a Christian. It's cool to be a conservative. I am, but my priority, my loyalty, my all encompassing values and where I structure my life is based on being a Christian. I'm here to be salt and light of the earth. I'm here to spread the good news of the gospel. I'm here to judge sin righteously, just as Jesus did. Jesus loves us all. I love my neighbor as myself, but with love comes judging sin righteously, guiding people to the kingdom, showing them where they're messing up because I wanted somebody to show me when I was messing up, when I was leading life in lust and, and all the sins that encompass sin, what it is, what it is to live on your own accord and be in darkness and think that you got it all figured out. No, no, no. Waging sin, it leads to death. You need to be born again. You need to pick up your cross, die to your old ways and lay that life down. It has no place in this earth. It has, there's no place for it other than hell, other than eternal damnation. I want eternal salvation. I want to be in heaven with my loved ones that have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior with y'all, hopefully if you've done so, but you can't, you can't just go around acting like everything is cool, calm, and collected, acting willy-nilly like this isn't a problem. Like what we see isn't, isn't chaos, isn't wickedness, isn't evil, isn't filthy, vile poison corrupting our kids, our curriculums in the school system. It's not my curriculum. They're pushing this nonsense on the news media, on TikTok, all of this. Don't buy into it. If the world is saying it's cool, that it's acceptable, that it's approved, that it's where the party's at, and that's what, what is good, it's because that's of this world thinking, not just in this world thinking. Remember, we're on this face of the earth for a very small fraction, a minute detail of a time. We're just a speck in God's overwhelming universe and this, this little bit of time. So if you don't do it right, if you don't put your eggs in the right basket, if you don't live righteously and look to God before your time is up, you know what's coming. Go where the, the, the people of this world aren't going. Go down that narrow path, that, that small gate that leads to heaven and eternal peace and salvation. That's what I pray for you. But back to Mark Robinson for a second before I end this thing out. The man wasn't standing at a podium, wasn't reading from notes, wasn't reading a teleprompter, didn't mince words together, get tripped up. This is what a politician looks like. This is what a Christian looks like that truly believes in what they're saying, that truly lives from the things that are in their heart foundationally, fundamentally, everything and every way they walk. This is what fruit is exuded from that. It's on full display. It's been brought into fruition. This is what we need in America. This is the kind of person that makes me feel honored to be an American. While the nation decays from the inside out, we got the remedy to fix it all. We got the remedy to wipe all this clean, to wash all this sin away. 
It's called the Bible. Basic instructions before leaving Earth. It's time for Joe Biden, the people on the left, these blue haired freaks, these radical secularists. Time for them to repent, confess Christ as Lord, get baptized to drive that point home and wash away that filth, nasty behavior and that wicked sin that they're living in and start new, start fresh, be born again. That's what I pray for. Them. I hate what they're doing. I hate sin. I don't hate the person. I hate the sin. But I pray for him. I love him. I love you. I ask that y'all do the same. Pray for me and mine. Pray for North Carolina, for Mark Robinson. This is the kind of person that we need in office. I love Donald Trump. I, I, I'll i vote for Big 45 if that's all we got. Absolutely. But if this man ever runs for president, I'm telling you, first ballot, casting it, Mark Robinson is that dude. But that's all I got for today. I know I've already got a little long-winded and off on a tangent already, but I get passionate. I love my country and I love God above all. But if y'all got anything to add to this, let me know down below in the comment section. Let's keep this conversation rolling. Don't forget to smash that like button. Subscribe if you're not already. Ring that notification bell so you get notified anytime I post a video. And, you know, feel free to share this video as always. The, the algorithm is always working against Christian values. So definitely get this out in front of the public so they can see what real truth looks like, not just this perceived fake of this world truth. But outside of that, if you want to support the channel, you like what I'm doing over here, you can always get awesome designs like this. Isaiah 4110 made by my lovely wife over in her Etsy store. She also has insulated tumblers like this this soldiers of america one right here many other christian american designs petite teat small designs to big big and hefty five x's we got everything you would like over there uh linked in the description section down below big thank you to my patreon and buy me a coffee members y'all know i love you you putting your hard-earned money behind me i am forever grateful i can't even put it into words how much you guys mean to me and just allowing me to monetarily support my family when youtube made demonetized videos or or whatever it may be but if youtube takes us now i'll be over on rumble so make sure you're following me over there as well but until next time i love you godspeed i'm gone